You know, a lot of times when we hear kids that are starting, and I know you hear this more than I do, there are, there are things about just fundamentally how they're set up. You know, the, the way their mouthpiece and reed work together, all those kinds of things that are working against their being successful in that. So can you talk about the optimum things for a teacher and a young student to think about, about the reed itself, the reed in relationship to the, to, to the mouthpiece, and the mouthpiece itself that they're using mm -hmm. with their horn? The teacher should be informed in terms of choosing a good mouthpiece and a good reed, mm -hmm. because good mouthpiece and a good reed is much more important than a good clarinet. Yeah. Although a good clarinet is great to have, <laughs> but if you had to choose um, between a good mouthpiece and a good clarinet, I'd choose a good mouthpiece. Yeah. Because, um, you've got to learn. You know, these are all um, we're athletes, and muscles need to be developed, mm -hmm. and uh, so you need a a healthy setup to to teach you the right thing. A good mm -hmm. mouthpiece and reed will actually teach you not to bite. It will yeah. teach you um, how to get a great sound. Mm -hmm. Well, you want something that's healthy. You don't want um, a pine mouthpiece or a B45 Van Doren mouthpiece mm -hmm. or something which is very, very open mm -hmm. because that just encourages you to, to bite on the reed. And, and most of the time you have to unlearn that idea mm -hmm. and learn more to, to... So you want something a closer facing. Mm -hmm. So something like a Van Doren M15, a um, Giuliani mouthpiece, or uh, something, uh, maybe an M30 or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. um, or a 5RV Lyre is probably okay. Yeah. Uh, and not a Van Doren 5 or read or something like that, yeah. you know, people uh, have this kind of macho idea that um, that real jocks use um, really hard reads, yeah. but, you know, that, that's, it gets a powerful sound um, in maybe half of the register of the clarinet um, just by biting like hell and, and blowing a lot. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, but there's, you know, it's, it's not a question of forcing the clarinet to, to sound, it's a question of allowing the clarinet to sound mm -hmm. and getting out of the way. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of philosophy. Yeah, yeah. So, so generally in reed strength, when you're thinking about going from the very beginning stages of playing mm -hmm. to what you would expect of a, of a good, solid high school player, how, what, what should they be thinking about in terms of the strengths of the reed? I think they should start off with, with a two and a half or a three, uh -huh. and then as they advance, maybe go to a three and a half. And um, maybe the best ones, depending on the mouthpiece, would go to a four. Uh -huh. yeah. But it's not really, you know, any mouthpiece, any any setup. If you bite on it, you can close it up. Uh -huh. That's not a reason to get a harder read. That's a reason to use less pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are are there things about getting reads ready to play? that you think kids and teachers should be thinking about? I mean, when somebody buys a box of reeds, whatever brand they buy, uh, w what should be the next well, process in getting yeah, that? Well, it's sort of a religion, but um, <laughs> so we're dealing with articles of faith yeah. more than anything else. <laughs> yeah. But you certainly can say, first of all, that you should, when you pick out, when you do a box of reeds, that you're not obligated to play every one. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> um, you should pick out the best four or five in a typical box, really, okay. and um, and just put the rest away or throw them away, whatever. <laughs> and um, and if they all kind of work in a, in an equal way, then you should put them in a in a reed case, and and every twenty minutes you should alternate, <laughs> um, because the the fact is, if you play on a reed, a lot of people find a good reed and just play on it until it dies. Mm -hmm. And that's very bad because eventually the reed gets softer and softer. Well, the reed doesn't get softer. It's just that, um, well, a boat builder will tell you if you um, if you push on a piece of wood when it's wet and it dries, then it then it retains that curve. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with it, the, the mouthpiece curves away from the reed. Mm -hmm. And if you put too much pressure, you're pushing the reed into the curve curve of the mouthpiece. Yeah. And if it dries like that, then it stays curved, and mm -hmm. so it, it has less spring back. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then for the last uh, half of the reed's life, you're, you're playing on a reed that's way too soft, mm -hmm. and um, there's lots of problems inherent with that.
Yeah. So. And, and and twenty minutes. You, you were saying that's about. You're talking about a, a you know consistent practice. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Breaking in a read is that's different. But that means you should play on a read for maybe um, five or ten minutes every day for four or five days. Mm -hmm. Um, there are books you can get to tell you how to optimize a read by sanding it or, or shading it with mm -hmm. a read brush or mm -hmm. um, read knives. Um, and you can do that, but, but it's, the read's still an organic material and it will change yeah. um, as you... And it does change because the, um, the saliva, organic matter in the saliva actually colonizes the uh, cellulose fibers of the read. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so when a reed is broken in, that actually means that there's enough colonies there that, uh, that have uh, created, a, I guess, a certain lubrication between the reed, between uh -huh. the fibers. And, uh -huh. and a broken in reed has a lot more resonance and, and capacity than, than a raw reed. So I, I bet you might have just in, in inspired a bunch of science fair projects about yeah. biology oh. now. <laughs> when you're... Going from the new box to finding those four or five reads, that is that all based on how they play, or are there things that you can look at that at least get you in the ballpark of reads that are going to play? Well, what I do <clears throat> is just put it on them. I wet them with water first rather than saliva, because that way you'll be sure to wet the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15 seconds or so. Don't soak it or anything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then... Uh, it's better to actually play it mm -hmm. and see how it flexes mm -hmm. rather than uh, take a look at it. A lot of people just put it up to the light and say, well, okay, the heart seems to be at the left and right. Well, that just means that that part of the reed's more opaque, but that doesn't necessarily have to do with how it flexes, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which is what the real vibration, uh, what you're interested in. Yeah. So you put it on the mouthpiece and it'll work better to the right or the left or whatever typically um, or up or down and so mm -hmm. you've got to mm -hmm. find that position on the mouthpiece that it, it's the best and really just moving it a tiny bit can make a huge difference yeah, yeah, yeah. in how it sounds. Yeah. So.